and uh, good morning everyone so welcome back to the art club so today i'll explain how to make your personal website with r which if you actually look at the talks i've given over the years i've given a version of this talk with like different technologies since like i don't know 2010 um and so i mean in general i like making websites uh, and um there's always like newer and easier tools to use um, I even at some point I, I wrote like a package for for this that um, you know uh, is not as useful when you compare it to the postcards package. We already have a video on postcards that Brenda Pardo taught a while back. Uh, so you could you could say like this is like version two or like maybe a bit the more advanced version of it. Cool. So. Um, here are all the packages that we're going to be using. We're going to be using mostly four packages. Um, um, uh, two of them are related to uh, getting uh, your um, repository set up and connected to GitHub. One of them is for the website, and then a fourth one is optional in case you want to add some icons. So you copy paste these commands on your um, RStudio window. Um, you can install um, these four packages that we'll be using. In the meantime, let me show you a bit where um, all of this comes from. Um, um, so um, I've taught a few classes here and there, but like in this particular link, which is in Spanish, yeah, it actually contains all the links to, to several related um, videos. So for example, here's a video that Brenda Pardo made for the art club in um, June, 2021. Um, and while there's some code and comments in Spanish and uh, you'll find that uh, exactly that, that same code, but now with comments in English on the Google doc. Um, what I wanna highlight here is that actually multiple people use this postcard package. So um, one of them is uh, Jeff Lick, my PhD advisor. Um, which uh, here you can see he has the main um, links to how you can find more information about him. And then like some links to some of the main things um, his team has produced over the years and like different people he's connected to. You'll notice that he doesn't list his team members. Um, and that's because uh, if you listing your team members can be quite time consuming to make sure it's all updated. Um, so he decided against, against doing that, right? Um, other people, if you look at their lab pages, you'll have all the people involved. Um, so in this case, uh, Jeff, he preferred to like highlight like uh, projects made by people in his team. Um, uh, so that's one option you could choose. Another one is Andrew Jaffe. Uh, who is, as you'll see, he's using exactly the same theme with like his photo on the left, some social links on the left too, and a short bio on the right. Um, here, Jaffe did choose to list all the people that work with him, um, but like there's no links to the individual members, right? Um, so that's one option too, because um, that way you don't need to keep track of like people's websites if they change and stuff like that. Um, Adley Wickham, who is the author of ggplot2 and many other great um, R packages, also um, use the same theme uh, with his phone on the left, some short information about him on the right. So you can see a little bit of a, a theme with these uh, websites, which they're like, the idea is that they, they're in a way minimalistic, right? They show like some basic information about you, some highlight some of your main projects and how you want people to get in touch with you. And so this can be quite useful because it's, um, imagine that you, uh, you know, you Google someone's name. Um, this website will be among one of the first websites that you see online. So it's almost like having your like um, business card, but with a bit more information than a regular business card would have. Um, and so this other one from Amy Peterson, who um, I advised a while back, this is used, this website is made with an older technology called um, Art Mark on Websites. Um, but I'm highlighting it because um, here I, I got feedback from a few people about like, 
what are the main things your website should contain? Um, Amy made her website when she was um, in the process of, of finding a job. And so it has a bit of about story, which is like a bit like your postcards information, but also has some, her main interests and her main like projects and presentations she gave, such that like uh, uh, these presentations and projects highlight like what are some of the skills she got. Then so there's some links to her profile and her email, right? Um, um, so this website is actually used as an example um, on a course um, on how to make websites with R, um, just because of the, the main content that it contains, right? Um, another one is um, Elisa Marquez Zavala, who uh, you'll notice is a, uh, the one that has like more colors, more um, emojis and things like that. Um, he also has like this nice like table formatting uh, for her teaching experience uh, or her education. Um, it has this nice like um, um, justified uh, formatting for that paragraph instead of left justified, um, um, sorry, instead of left um, column. Um, so it has a few nice things and uh, we'll look at the code behind this website in case you want to edit yours. Um, then there's Brenda Pardo, who is the student that made the, the, that first video and also is using this same theme with a photo on the left, uh, information about her on the right. Um, and it highlights some of, some of her papers, some of her experience, et cetera. Boom. So we'll make a website like that, but first uh, we need to configure um, our, um, R to work with um, um, R Studio. Um, here I, I, on the Google Doc, I left you some links to uh, where some of this material comes from. Um, but ultimately, we want to be using um, GitHub because they have this feature called GitHub Pages, which are free websites. They provide, um, they host them for us um, for free. Um, and um, it makes them like, basically because of that, it makes it super easy to use. They're gonna be tied to your GitHub profile. Um, um, Google actually prioritizes them when the people search your name. So there's a lot of nice things about it. Um, and instead of following all these instructions about how to make one from scratch, we're gonna be using R for making that website. Um, so in order to do that, first we need to install Git. So there's this uh, happy, happy uh, Git with R um, 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 book that has a lot of different chapters, but in particular chapter number six is about how to install Git. Um, so this will depend a lot on what computer you have. If you're using a Mac um, and you're using the command line tools, you probably already have Git. So you can check that on the terminal by typing git space dash dash version. Um, if you're on Windows, for example, like there's this uh, install git for Windows link, um, which is the, the, the easiest option to use. Um, there's a few like uh, things you need to be careful when installing it, but this is the easiest option to install git on Windows. Um, um, cool. Um, on Mac, uh, if you don't have the, the command line tools, the way you can install them is with this Xcode dash select um, space dash dash install command that you can copy paste to a terminal window. And that's how you'll um, install um, the command line tools. Um, this might take a bit of time. Um, um, and there's always like more options than, than just that one. So, um, I'll assume that for now that people have Git on their computers, um, but um, um, we can always like um, do this later. Um, and if you need help, feel free to ask for a data science guidance session with anyone in my team uh, for that. So let's, at this point we have R and Git, and Git installed. Um, we'll need to have a GitHub account as well. Um, so actually I'll put that link later. Um, um, if you go to github.com, um, on the top right, there's this sign up button um, that you can follow through and like basically get your uh, GitHub account. 
Now, something um, that um, I sh should highlight is that your GitHub username is going to be part of your URL for your website, uh, unless you pay for like an actual domain. Um, and so this reminds me of uh, one of the boot camps we did um, a while back, um, which we, we did a boot camp on the book, How to Be a Mother Scientist by Jeff Leake. And in that book, uh, How to Be a Mother Scientist, uh, Jeff Leake advises people to use the same um, username for GitHub, um, Twitter, your email, um, you know, LinkedIn, whatever you want. So I know that it's sometimes quite challenging to find um, a username that is available on all of those websites. But if you can um, try to try to make your um, account names like the the same across websites, that way people will like always say like, oh, you know, El Collado Tour. That's like Leonardo Collado Torres, right? Um, or things like that. Um, cool. So you'll make your GitHub account. Um, if you don't have one, I think most of you already have one. Um, so sometimes the issue is just finding your password. Um, and so with that, we can now move on into some actual commands um, in R. So let me close some of these windows and open an R Studio um, session. Cool. It's open now. Um, so the first command we have here is from the uses package. Uses is a package that um, is made by the same authors, uh, I mean, or some of the same authors as that happy uh, Git with R book. Um, so they really try to make it easy for people to, um, to simplify some of the workflows and setup steps. So here we'll use this, uh, use this create GitHub token. Um, so in this case, you should choose a name for your token. Um, you'll notice that it already opened um, this particular page on github.com. Um, I'm already logged into my account. Uh, otherwise, you would need to log in into it. It already has several options selected, which um, are exactly the options we need. Um, and so here, you, I would recommend choosing a, a name that is useful for you to remember. Um, so like a lot of times we'll be like our GitHub token. Um, let's say in this case, it will be like uh, uh, our says club because you, you might end up having multiple tokens for like different computers, et cetera. Then you can choose when you want this token to expire. Um, uh, I'll make mine expire uh, tomorrow. Um, 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 and at the end here, you can click this green button to generate the token. Once you do that, you'll see here that there is a 40, um, 40 character length um, token that shows up, which you can view it uh, almost as a password. This is the only time it'll show up. So you should copy paste it. So here, this if you click this button, it will copy it. Um, um, and uh, don't close this window until we're done with the next step, right? Because otherwise you'll, you'll have to re regenerate the token. Uh, so you can see here, I have actually several token names for like our GitHub on my back, on my Windows, on a JHPC, right? Um, um, so now that we have our token, this is um, basically like, you, you can think of it as your password for GitHub. Now we need to add it to our computer. And so here's, there's like different options depending on whether you're Mac and Windows versus Linux. Um, so um, if you're a Mac or, or Windows, there's this package called Git Creds for Git Credentials, which allows you to, um, to store at the token in a, in a secure way. And by secure way, I mean that it, it stores the token using, if you're using Mac, it will store it in your keychain, which means that um, there's not a text file with your token that people can access. There's an encrypted file, right, on your computer. And so that's more secure, right, in case someone else gets access to your computer. Um, the other um, option is to edit what's called the R environment file. Um, 
And so I'll do that over here. And this is what it works on any computer, but in particular, it works for Linux because that's where we, there's no package um, uh, token manager. Um, and in, in there, you need to write this uh, specific variable called, called GitHub underscore PAT. PAT stands for personal access token. Um, so once you do that, just make sure that you have an empty line at the end of your file save it once you've saved it let's go to at the very top on our studio go to session and let's restart our r session cool um so i'm obviously going to delete this uh, github token because it's you know it's going to be public on the video right um so that's what i did over here i reloaded r um i went to our um uh, i went to the menu and i guess i used this wrong it was session um, then restart R. So we need to restart R because when you restart R, it actually reads this R environment um, file. Um, and so we'll have it uh, ready, right? Um, cool. Um, all right. Um, the, people don't like using the R environment as for passwords or tokens because it's a text file that like, if someone get access to your computer, they can like find uh, that information and, and use it inappropriately. Um, okay. Um, so you don't have your GitHub account, you should make one. Um, and so at this point, you should have a GitHub account with a username. And now we need to tell your computer, you know, who are you? And so we can use this, use this um, edit git config command, um, which, um, um, Mine has a you know several things, but uh, the main thing you need is these lines where you have the user uh, and uh, uh, the name, right? Um, 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 you want to have your name and your email. Uh, otherwise, like GitHub will complain about who are you. Um, and now this file has a very specific thing where you'll notice that before name. There's actually four spaces, also before email, four spaces or an actual or um. I guess here I actually have a tab character. Um, um, either of those options will work as long as you're consistent with the uh, with the spacing. Um, uh, so I I believe either two or four spaces works and um or a tab character, uh, but I would recommend using like the the four spaces. Uh, so you write, uh, you know, this um, user with the square brackets and uh, name equal and like your name, you don't need to put it in, inside quotes. It will recognize that it's uh, multiple words. And then your email, which you have to use here, the email that you sign up for your account at, on GitHub. Um, cool. um, so that's the configuration of linking your computer to your GitHub account, um, and particularly for R, right? Um, that's why we use that R environment file. Um, at this stage now, we're ready to create our, um, um, what is called an R Studio project, which will be a directory with um, some code that we can then uh, link to a particular repository on GitHub. So we're gonna use this, use this create project command. And now this is where it gets important to, um, we have to choose a very specific name for the project. And that should be um, your GitHub username. So in my case, that would be elcoyarotor.github.io. And that's a, that's a particular um, name because GitHub pages, which we, referred to earlier, will recognize that as your home website, um, um, as, a, as a repository that contains the files for your home website, right? Um, I've seen a lot of people make mistakes at this stage where they don't type their GitHub username properly. Like let's say they type their email username, which might not be the same as their GitHub username. They might not type it with the same capitalization as their GitHub username, etc. So make sure here like, Double check this command before you run it. Um, I already have one for myself, so I'm just going to um, uh, you know, use this name that is um, 
not my actual user and uh, GitHub username. Um, cool. So after running that command, a second RStudio window will pop up, um, which it's uh, located at um, uh, your um, query you specified, and it um, uh, will contain the files for our website. Now that we did that, we can now use the use this use git, which will say like, hey, I actually want to use git for this repository, for this directory, sorry. So we'll create the repository. Um, and it says like, hey, is it okay to commit files? And I'll say yes. There's always going to be three options. One of them is going to be yes. The other two are going to be no. And, they're, and the, the text and location changes at random. So for me right now, it's one. Um, and then it says, hey, do you want to actually want to restart our studio? And I, you'll also say yes for this option. Um, so in this case, it's two for me. Um, um, and so we'll restart our studio. And the reason that was useful is now our studio has this Git panel over here, um, um, which means that we are, um, our studio recognizes that this directory is now on their Git version control. If you look at the files, you'll notice that now we have this .git directory, um, um, which again is where like um, we're version controlling our uh, website. But that only means that we have we're using Git on our computer. We actually need to link it to GitHub, and so for that we'll use this use this use GitHub command. Um, cool. And so you'll notice now that it's actually using my token information and it automatically made a repository on GitHub and it automatically links the files in my computer to those on GitHub. And you can see here that like um, we just created this. Um, so um, um, that's awesome. Um, um, cool. Um, so if you're actually using um, um, uh, the exact name for your repository that is based on your GitHub username, you won't need to do these things, but I'm just going to, uh, uh, I'm gonna actually just gonna switch to, um, gonna switch branches and make sure that we have a GitHub pages branch in this case. Um, you don't need to do those commands. Um, I only need to do them because otherwise my example won't work for you. Uh, because I'm not using the uh, I'm not using the <clears throat> the specific name, right? Uh, my GitHub username. Okay, so now that we have our um, files on our computer that are connected to GitHub. At this point, now we need to choose a template. And so Postcards has um, 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 has five different templates. So let me put the link to that on over here. And so it was called further down. Here we can see the templates. One of them is called uh, um, Jola. Um, and the template here shows, um, well, um, I guess I can't zoom in on the images. Um, the template here will show um, your profile picture uh, on a circle in this case, your name, some basic information that you're gonna write, and then on the bottom links to your profiles. So this is a very minimalistic right, um, um, website. Another one is um, exactly the same, but with a blue background and white text, which is called um, uh, Jola Blue. Um, then this one, I bet you'll recognize the Trestle's um, uh, template. That's the one that has your picture on the on the left, uh, on a square picture, your name, your profile links, and then text that you want to write on, on the on the right side. So that's actually the profile, the you know, the template that like Jeff Leake, Andrew Jaffe, uh, basically uh, all the website I showed you. I think use this use use this one. One that I didn't show you is. Uh, the one that Louise made. So she, she chose um, this other template. Um, 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 cool. 
And so what's that other template? That is the um, Onofre, I don't know how to pronounce it, Onofre, um, which has your um, profile picture on a circle, your name, any text you wanna write. And then at the bottom, it has your um, links to your um, profiles that you wanna add. Um, then there's a new one called Solana, which has um, your picture on square on the top right, your name with some links to uh, your um, profiles. And then uh, and then after that is like where it has all the text you wanna write. Um, so, you know, whichever you want, is, they're all good. Um, um, at this point, you could always start your website with one of them and later on edit it to a, the, a template if you prefer. So I've never used the Solana one. Um, let me try that. Um, and so with, you know, to use it, we would, I would just need to copy paste this line of code where I use postcards, create the postcards. Um, and I'm gonna choose the, the Solana template. So if I, once I do that, you'll notice that it created an index.rmd file. And it also added a photo. In this case, the photo of Sigridur, which I bet I didn't pronounce correctly. Um, apologize for that. Um, so once you do that, then um, the instructions I wrote is like use the neat button on our studio. And so the neat button is this like blue button over here that has a little like um, 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 tread ball uh, with a knitting, uh, how do you call that? Uh, aguja, um, a knitting needle. Um, so um, if you click on that button, um, our studio will run some stuff behind and it creates the website for you. Um, so, um, you know, um, you can actually emulate what it will be when you have, um, when you look at the website on mobile, because if you make it uh, narrow, that this is how the website looks when you're, um, someone accesses the website on the phone, um, but if they access it on the computer and you make it wide, this is how it will look, right? Um, so at this point we're like, hey, that's happy, you know, that's good. Um, we like that, but it only exists on our computer. So we need to um, upload those files to GitHub. And so the way you would do that is on this Git panel in our studio, you wanna select all the files, add them, which means that you're gonna label them for your next commit. Then make a commit, which means that you're actually saving the files and then push, which means that you're uploading the files to GitHub. So I'll do that over here. I have my Git panel. I wanna click under the commit button um, and I'm gonna add them. And so that means clicking on the stage box, adding all three of them. I'll just write an informative message, which is like, um, like that. I'll make the commit and then, um, I guess I actually needed to restart all the session too, because um, I, we use, use GitHub um, after loading it. Mm. Wait, why is it not working? Wait, I'll just do it manually here. Um, I'll just push manually. Mm. Um, so once I do that on GitHub, I'll just refresh this and, um, you'll notice I have now that index.html file. You'll notice it's like, um, orange uh, circle, which means that, um, if I, uh, um, I'm pressing command on my keyboard. Um, um, so actually, sorry, I'm just gonna go to this details page. And so you'll notice here that GitHub is like actually trying to make my website. Um, it's trying to build it. Um, and this is a quite a fast process. And, um, um, you know, build it fairly fast. Now it's like doing the uh, other things where it's like reporting it um, uh, and then later we'll like deploy. It. Um, so deploying means like actually, uh, you know, uh, making it available 
And so now it's done. Uh, we have all green um, uh, check marks. And so what that would mean is um, if you had used, you know, the, the exact same name uh, of your, rep uh, your GitHub username, you can then go to your GitHub username.github.io and then um, you would have access to your website. In my case, uh, mine is a little bit more complicated because I'm, uh, I'm just um, teaching you how to do this. <laughs> so actually mine lives under my username.github.io then uh, the repository name, which was, you know, uh, for the example purposes, mine was called your underscore GitHub underscore username.github.io. Cool, so now we have an actual website that people can access. Uh, uh, but that's, um, you know, where the fun part starts, which is actually editing um, the website um, to your liking, right? And so that involves going back to this index RMD file and making some changes. So I'll change, for example, the name. Um, Um, so I'm changing here the title. Um, if I wanted to change the photo, um, let me one, find one for myself. Um, mm -hmm. Where do I have a photo? I found one for myself. I'm going to copy this profile PNG to the directory. Um, so I had to do this externally from our studio. Once I do that, I'm going to change or here the image to be profile.png. Um, so let's say I like that. I'm going to click on the neat button. And um, uh, you know, here we can preview how it looks. We can see my my picture. I changed my name, right? Um, um, and let's say I like that. So you should always like knit after like small changes. Don't wait until making a ton of changes before you knit because otherwise it might not work. Um, um, I'm just gonna copy the URL for the Arstats Club. Uh, for Twitter, I don't have a SoundCloud account or uh, actually we do have a blog. Um, mm -hmm. um, and we don't have a LinkedIn for, um, for us, for the art club. So I'll just uh, need again. Um, Cool. You'll see now how it's just blog and Twitter as my links. Let's say I like that. I'm going to go to commit. Again, I'm going to add all the files in particular here, like this profile PNG that we, um, that is brand new and say like, Oh, um, write an informative message. So in this case, I, um, cool. Click on their commit, and now I, now I can actually use the green arrow for pushing. Um, once I do that on GitHub, you'll notice that we have again. Um, oh, sorry. You'll notice here on the GitHub pages that we have this um, orange um, orange icon, and a, a few seconds later, I'll get updated. Um, you know, maybe twenty seconds or so. Um, and at that point, we'll be able to refresh the website and the name will have changed. Um, mm -hmm. We'll wait a little bit longer for that. So um, this index RMD is written using what's called the markdown syntax. And so some things about that is like the pound signs are for headers. So the more you use, the smaller the header it is. So this is like a level two header. Um, 
Um, if you want to make it bigger, you would like delete one of these pound signs. Um, if you want to have things in italics, you use um, just one um, asterisk on each side of the words that you want to have in italics. If you want to have things bolded, you use two of them. Um, um, and let's say you actually wanted to have a link. Um, um, so here you say like my actual website. Um, if you want to have a link, um, the syntax for that in Markdown is you use square brackets for whatever text you want people to see. Then immediately after this, the, you close the square brackets, you open parentheses, and inside of that, you put the actual link you want. Um, cool. So here I'm going to knit again. Knit updates the HTML file. Um, so you can see now how that changed over here. Um, and I'll make a commit uh, um, and write a message. Um, commit, then push. So you'll be repeating this cycle as many times as you want. Um, I'm going to refresh the website. And like now you can see that um, this is the version where I had updated my name, the profile, and the links. Um, you can see also the name gets used for the short text over here on the top for the bookmarks, I mean, for um, the tabs on uh, Google Chrome. Uh, you can then later add an icon if you don't want this like earth um, random icon. You later add an, an actual icon file for your website. Um, and this is how you would keep updating your website. Now, some things that you might be interested in adding um, is... Um, you might you know want to add some of the same things elisa added to her um website which are like little icons or emojis she also used colors so like the twitter uh, icon over here is in purple um instead of the regular color she has for example over here um um zooming in she has the r um icon uh in in the gray color you could have it in other colors or like you know python um icons etc um so she did a lot of like you know nice things here um and so the way you do that is for example um, um this on the links this is how she made like um um the label for twitter she made it like a lot fancier so i want to Instead of having Twitter over here, I'm going to copy paste hers. Um, and I'm going to let's forest three. Cool. Let me see if that works. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just changed the icon for Twitter to, to be this, um, this green icon over here. Um, um, so you could choose any any actual color you want. Um, I'm just going to commit. Um, copy this link. Um, so that's how you could add like that green icon, for example, um, or any, you know, with this font awesome package, they have a lot of different icons and like you can fill them with like different colors. So like the R1 I see is over here, which is this font awesome. The R icon is called R dash project and she filled it in gray. Uh, you know, there's a Python icon over here. Um, she, she also filled it in gray. So um, any icons you want to add, she directly added some emojis here for like teaching. So you can add directly emojis if you want. Um, this is how she like um, 
set the text to be justified um, for her description. So this is um, um, one of the nice things about Markdown is you can use like, direct like HTML code. Um, so that's what she used over here. Um, this is a formatting if you want to write like an actual table with Markdown. Um, um, so there's a lot of things here that are a bit more advanced that, um, um, but you know, they could be nice if you want to learn about them. Um, again, this is, um, this is all like, uh, um, our Markdown can actually have direct HTML code. So let me, for example, um, uh, let me find, um, on my actual website. Um, mm -hmm. Like, mm, not this one. I'm gonna copy paste here some actual HTML code and I use on my website. Um, so this adds a little map. Um, um, that keeps track of where like users are coming from. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. I need to push it so it'll become live. Um, so that will take like 20 seconds or so before we can see it. Um, um, that's something you could do. Um, let's say you actually want to embed a Twitter timeline. So um, this one example on this website over here where I like embedded the Arstas Club Twitter timeline um, at the bottom. So you could do this for your own Twitter profile if you want to almost have like a bit of a news role on your website. Um, so there's, I put the link for on Twitter where it explains how to actually get that code. But right now I'm just gonna copy paste the code that I have exactly for that um, uh, from another website. Um, um, so this is all like HTML code. Um, uh, boom, I'll knit it. Um, um, I'll commit, then commit. And then push. Uh, so some of these ones, they don't, they won't work on the preview they have on RC. You actually have to like uh, make the changes live. Um, so we might need to wait a few seconds here, but like, okay, here you can see like the map is showing up. It's just like loading the data, I guess. Um, um, and we need to wait, I guess, a little bit more, you know, for, uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to wait until this becomes a green check mark for the one where I added the Twitter timeline. Um, um, oh, so it's building reporting build and then deploying. So this takes like, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 more seconds until it's updated. Um, uh, it's almost done. Cool. It's done over here. So let me refresh it. Now you can see here, uh, we have the Twitter timeline embedded on the website, right? Um, so this is the R Stats Club Twitter timeline. So you could do any, you know, you could, if you want to, you could do this. Um, um, embedding a Twitter timeline gives it a bit of a feel of like, hey, this website is updated, <laughs> right? Even though you might not be updating your website that frequently. Cool. So with that, um, I'm gonna stop the recording and I'll see you around.